Hallelujah. It's a privilege as well today to also be sharing the gospel for the first time in the full gospel church in front of my parents. Uh, for the first time in the full gospel church in front of my parents. I, I would love to appreciate them for coming here with two of my nephews there at the back. So for the first time, I'm sharing the gospel in front of my family. This church is a church of first time. This church is a church that changes history. Are you ready to change history, church? We are here to change history. Hallelujah. Even if you are here as well for the first time today, just know it's a first time to do God's will. I asked a question when we invited people to church this morning. I asked them, and I want you to answer it very loudly. Do you want to grow spiritually? <laughs> yes. So we invite you to come and join us. If you want to grow spiritually, you are at the right place. Because of we are growing spiritually. And we're going to work with God to help you grow spiritually as well. Amen. Today we're going to read from Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. We just have three verses today that I want us to really invest our attention, invest our understanding, invest our heart. If you're thinking about something now, just say to that thought, thought, I want you out of my mind. Today I want to hear God's word. Ne? Yes. So just to introduce also our three months theme, we are on the 90 days of seeking Jesus. Do you hear that? 90 days of what? Of seeking Jesus. We spoke last week of why is it important to seek Jesus. I'm not going to go back there, but it is very, very, very important to seek Jesus. And you see there, we have the whole map of the whole world. <laughs> so we don't seek Jesus just for a small ministry. We're seeking Jesus for a global ministry. Do you hear that? We're seeking Jesus for what? For a global ministry. We want to touch all nations, because that's what the Bible says so. The Bible says we must touch all nations, not some nations, all nations. That's why we have the map there. So if you want to seek Jesus with us every Sunday, be with us. Do you hear that? Set an alarm. Don't let anyone disturb you. If they invite you for a party on Sunday, 4 o'clock, say, no, I'm fine, thanks, I'm going to seek Jesus. <laughs> Would you do that? Eh, even if they invite you for that nice braai with that steak and vors, just say, it's fine, guys. Four o'clock, I'm going to enjoy the service there. So that's why we're having this today, 90 days of seeking Jesus. And today's message is titled, Seeking Jesus by Starting from the Great Commission. Did you understand that part? We're going to seek Jesus by starting from the Great Commission in Matthew 28. Because of the church, we need to go back, not to where the first pastor started preaching. Did you hear that? We must not go back to where the first pastors started preaching. We must go back to where? Where Jesus Christ commissioned his disciples and said, go. But we, before we get there, before we get there, I've asked Shepard, Shepard, please come forth. Uh, we said in this 90 days, we're going to also pray for one nation every Sunday. So I've asked Shepard to also um, pray for Malawi this morning, uh, this afternoon. I like morning, Pastor. I don't know why. Uh, Shepard, please come forth quickly, quickly, man. We're going to pray for Malawi this morning. He's going to pray. For, he's going to just share a verse uh, for Malawi, you know, and then please be with him in your prayer. Even throughout the week, pray for Malawi and pray for Shepard. Come forth, Shepherd. Come forth, Shepherd. Be feel free. Yes. Just greet the people. Hello, the good children. Yeah. You are welcome. I'm happy because today is my first time to stand on the mountain of fire. I want to praise the Lord. Yeah. Without Lord, I can't stand here. Everything with God is possible. I'm sure and believe tomorrow it's you stand on the mountain of fire. Let's believe God. Uh, we want a prayer for Malawi. 
Our pastor wanna read for Corinthians 4, verse 8. He says, I must read for him Colossians 4, verse 8. It says, I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good all the time. I'm telling you. Uh, today, we want to pray for my love. Let's ask God... Um, to give all the people of Malawi um, a wisdom of understanding the ways of God. Because without understanding a wisdom of God, we are nothing. Yes. We are putting our life in the dustbin. Amen. So let's ask God to help Malawi to understand um, the ways of God all the time. Yes. We can stand and pray for Malawi, please. Thank you, Jesus. You are the Son of living God. You are the Holy Father, Holy Son. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. We are here because of you. Bless Malawi, Father. Bless all the people. Bless everything in Malawi. In the community of Malawi, bless them. Even the leaders of their bless him. Because you are the King of Kings. You are the God of mercy. You are the God of wisdom. We glorify your holy name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Bless him, Father. Bless him, Father. Bless him, Father, with the Holy Spirit. Touch everyone in Malawi, Father. Touch everyone, Father. Even my Father, touch him. Even our president, touch him. Minister, the readers of the church, Touch with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise my mom and dad, even my brothers and sisters. Touch him. Give him a wisdom of understanding. Give him a wisdom of understanding. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. You are the King of kings. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Shepherd. Please be seated. Do not underestimate prayer. God is going to do something already. God acts on his word. And God acts when prayers go up to him. So God is not deaf that he cannot hear. And his hand is not short that he cannot move. So Shepherd, one day we will equip him. And help him, he says his desire is also to be a pastor, to also go and start a church in Malawi. That's his desire. And we pray and we kind of work with him for a few months, few years or something. And one day we go and we send him back. We're going to help him start the church. Aren't you excited? More churches are planted. Eh? More churches are planted. Hallelujah. So you see, church, we're not here to play church. We are here to be the church. Hallelujah. Let's read Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19 together. I think it's also, I said the, the message is seeking Jesus by starting from the Great Commission. Let's read that verse together. Please, let's read it together. Read it as well. And Jesus said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Woo. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo. Are we going to do that, church? <laughs> Are we going to do that? Because it's a simple instruction. Eh? Go and make disciples. Simple instruction. The church must repent from religion. The church must repent from traditions. The church must repent from man-made rules, emotionalism, secularism, friendship with the world, and we must return back to Jesus. We, we must really hear 
when Jesus said you must either be cold or hot. It's either you follow Jesus with all your heart or you don't follow him at all. Make your choice, please. Don't play church. It's either you are cold or hot. You can't be lukewarm. You can't be in the middle. You can't be like, I want to follow Jesus. Tomorrow you don't follow Jesus. Choose one. Hot or cold. On this passage of scripture, which is the great commission. Commission just means instruction. It means I command you. It means I give you a role. Jesus Christ gives his disciple a role. Don't you like that sometimes? Don't you like to be given a role, something to do? Eh? Don't you like that sometimes? Even if it's washing the dishes, it's a role. <laughs> we give you a role to wash the dishes. It's something, you know. Be proud of it. <laughs> I see you. But he's giving them a role. He's giving them an instruction. He, gi he gives them a, co a commandment. You see, you must, we must always try to go back to the Bible. You must think, think of this now. There was no church building here. Remember, there was no church building. There was no, no church bells. There was no ding, 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 come to church. There was no that things. There, 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 was, no, there was no even advertisement. There was nothing here. Think about such things. There was no songs being sang there. There was nothing. No color lights and smoke machines. Nothing. No social media. Nothing was there. You know what was there? Jesus Christ. Who rose from the dead and his disciples on a mountain. Ah, imagine. I just want to show you three things. Three things. One, they were on a mountain of Galilee. Think about that. If we go back to the Old Testament, Moses met with God on, on Mount Sinai. The Bible says the mountain was full of lightning and smoke, and it was full of God's glory. And you know who could only go there? Moses. Do you understand that? God said to him that the people can only stand at the foot of the mountain because of the people could not enter the holiness of God. Sin was in the people's life that they cannot enter the holiness of God. You see, even in your life, you cannot enter the holiness of God because of sin. But now because of Jesus Christ, you can enter his holiness. Do you see that? And now here, Jesus Christ, who he fulfills the law. He fulfills the law. He stands on the mountain. And now it's no longer about the people can stand on the foot of the mountain. The people go near to Christ on the mountain. Everyone can go to the mountain of Galilee. You as well can go to the mountain of Galilee. You can be one of those 11 disciples that were standing with Christ that day. You can be one of them. And here Christ speaks to you as he spoke to them. Do you understand that thing? That's why the Bible says Moses came with the law, but Jesus Christ came with what? Grace and truth. Hebrews says Jesus Christ was of more glory than Moses. Because of he has entered the Holy of Holies, we too now can boldly speak to God directly in the Holy of Holies. That's why Jesus Christ, when he died, that curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. You know why? Because of God was breaking that division of holiness. He was saying any man who believes in Christ can come in his holy throne. Because of Jesus Christ. Don't you like spending time in his holy throne? In his holy throne. You know what we just did now here? Saying holy, holy. When we're worshiping here, it's just a glimpse of heaven. It's not even what you're going to see one day when you are with him. And we're going to do it what? Day and night. That's what I love about the Lord. If you get tired in one hour, you must be very, very, very you see, concerned about your, your problem. You can't be tired of worshiping God in one hour. Because of one day, you'll have to do day and night, non-stop. Imagine that. So if you are tired on earth, uh, in heaven, you're gonna, uh, maybe you're going to resign in heaven. I don't know. So there was the mountain of Galilee. And then there was Jesus Christ on that mountain who was crucified three days ago. 
Think of it. Crucified means that he died the death of a criminal. He had been innocent. He died after tremendous torture. I don't know if, the, if you have seen anyone being tortured or you yourself have been tortured, but no, no one on this earth have went through much torture as Jesus Christ. Three days ago, he stood before the trial. Imagine, he went to court to stand before the trial, even though he had no sin. <laughs> before the magistrate court, think about it. He's standing before the magistrate court and he's being accused. And he says nothing. Only time he speaks is when they ask him, are you the king of the Jews? He says, as you say so. That's why Isaiah says, before the sheep, before the, uh, as the sheep is silent before the shearer, so was he silent before the killers. That's how he was. He was so meek. He was betrayed by a close friend. He was, he was left by his very own. You remember the disciples left him. He was mocked. Huh? Imagine, ah, you are the king of kings. Look at you, you could save others, but you cannot save yourself now. He was slept. Imagine, the king of kings was slept for you. I know some people play a sport today just to slap each other. Do you know the sports that people just slap each other? They just put flour and then they slap one another. And then I saw another video yesterday. That person, that strong man, is so strong. Né? That guy puts flour and he hit that guy like this. It's like, whoosh, whoosh. The third time, he said, what? That guy falls, boom, once. Imagine that. Jesus Christ was slapped for you. Think about such things. He was put on the crown of thorns that was portraying victory. Medically proved that he lost tremendous blood and water. Imagine that. No blood in his body. No water in his body. He lost it. He was whipped. <laughs> you know some bog? You know some bog, ne? Yeah, you know some bog. But he was not whipped with some bog. Imagine how so, a sambok makes you to feel like. But he was not hit with the sambok. The historian says that it was a whip that had also some wire that was so sharp that every time they hit him, his flesh was opening up. Think about such thing. You see the tremendous pain he went through for you? To extend the pain and trauma, Jesus had to carry the heavy wooden cross. Imagine. For 600 meters. 600 meters. No blood. No water. Weak. And yet, he had to carry the cross. He, he couldn't even carry it anymore. That's why they fetched Simon to say, help this poor man to carry the cross. You know why he was doing all those things? For you and me. He was put on the cross, nailed on his wrist and feet because of sin had to be punished. He took upon himself our transgressions. You know what does it mean when he says he took upon himself our transgressions? Let me show you. God, when he created us, he put a line here. To say, if you cross this line, you will die. If you cross this line and sin, you will die. And we people have crossed that line. We have transgressed. So the only way you can get back to him is through Jesus Christ. That's why he took his, our transgression upon himself. You can, once you have crossed this line and sinned against God, you can never, ever go back to God out of your own strength. Amen. You need Jesus Christ to take you back to him. Amen. You see what we mean? It's not about a church service, a Sunday service, two hours, three hours. It's not about that. It's about someone who loved you, who created you so much. He even came to say, I will die for you. 
matter me. You understand what we are talking about? We're talking about love here. We're not talking about chocolates and roses and all those love that you know. We talk about love that is full of blood and full of pain and full of torture. For hours, he had to go through that. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was laid in the tomb after he died. But death could not hold him. We sang it just now. He could not see corruption. And I know it's difficult to understand these things because of all that you know is that when we bury a person, that person will go under the ground, he will become bones and the worms will eat him. That's what you know. It's, it's true, right? That's what you know. It's difficult to understand. Jesus Christ was never bones. Jesus Christ was never eaten by the worms. He rose from the dead. Who, guys, this is a gospel that we need to hear every day of your life. You don't, need it on a, you don't need to hear the gospel on a Sunday. You need to hear it every day of your life. He rose in a glorified body. You see, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then our faith is vain. Then I should just close the Bible and sit down. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, I would sit down and say nothing. And we are still in our sins. Paul says in the book of Colossians that we read this, this week, he says Jesus Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. I want, I want to make an il illustration of that verse. Eh? Where's, where's Martha? Where's Martha? Martha, please come forward quickly. Eh? I want to make an illustration to, with this verse. Mama, I know you have a nice phone. Can you please come borrow us your phone? Is it here? Eh? The phone? I want to make an illustration. Remember, he is the visible image of what? The invisible God. You can look at the people. By the way, it's Martha's birthday, guys. Uh, that's why I'm giving. <laughs> Mama, I want you please to take Martha a picture. Yes, no, no, no. It's an illustration. Take her a picture. Okay, nice. In front of the people. Nice. Good. Good. No, it's fine, Mama. A picture, not pictures. <laughs> okay. Can you, can, you, can you please go to the picture? Yes. Thank you. Just He is the what? The visible image of the invisible God. Capture it. Okay, now we're going to ask Martha. Martha, what do you see? Name all the things you see on the picture. I see. What do you see? I see that the Lord is shining through me. The Lord is shining through you. Yes. <laughs> it's becoming spiritual now. No, the physical things you see. The physical things. Oh, beauty. <laughs> beauty. I don't know what else. Okay. Mm. Mm. Let me help her. I see Martha on the picture. I see uh, the speaker there at the back, the aircon, the flowers, the curtain. I see the mission there. You see, I see a chair there. You see what you, you see all those things? Right, you can give mama the phone. I want to show you something. Think about this, you can sit down. Thank you, happy birthday in advance. <laughs> it's today. Think about this now. We just took a picture here. That's an image on the phone. Think about this. And in the image we took, it's not all things that are in this venue that appears on the image. Do you get that? We only saw this part. So if we put that somewhere on Facebook, they wouldn't know, they wouldn't know about you. But you saw the picture. But you didn't see. Uh, but what, what, what am I saying now? Please help me. <laughs> you see? You saw when the picture was taken, but you are not part of the picture. You understand what we are saying? So, Jesus Christ is the image, all that we can see, of the invisible God. 
all those things that we didn't see on those pictures. Do you understand that? So there's more in God that we don't see. There's more in God that you cannot comprehend. Because of when someone who will see that picture will only see Martha in her dress and all that background, but will not see you. But if she comes here one day, then she will see you. That's why you will so be amazed one day when you see God. Because there's so much you don't know about Him. Amen. You see, you can't know enough about God. There's so much more in Him. That's why you must keep on seeking Jesus for these 19 days. Amen. There were the disciples. The disciples on that mountain, some worshipped, but some doubted. And we were all in both sides. Sometimes we worship, sometimes we doubt, right? Yes. So among those disciples were imperfect men. Men like Peter, who rejected Christ three times. And others fled, hid themselves. So these men were not perfect. But yet, Christ chose them. So you see, you don't have to be perfect for Christ. He will make you perfect for him. So don't wait for a right time to accept Christ. Now is the right time. And let's go a bit now to the Great Commission. First of all, it says, go. Come on, it's straightforward, ne? Go. That shows you, you must now go because of, I have raised you for three years. Remember Christ was with his disciples for what? Three years. He has taught them. And now he says to them, go. Go and be leaders. Go and take initiative. Go and be the light. Go and be the salt. Just go. And we are, <laughs> I don't know why it's so difficult. In our lives, every day we are full of going. <laughs> when, we woke up, when we wake up from home, we go. We go to work. You go to school. After school, you go home. After work, you go home. You see, you're full of going. <laughs> so why is it so difficult to go and make disciples? Because if you are full of going. <laughs> Your whole program is about going. <laughs> you're always going somewhere. That's why you came here. You came somewhere. And after here, you're going home. <laughs> you see, you are going all the time. So why is it difficult to go and make disciples? Because if you are full of going. Go and make disciples. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. John 20, 21. And he says, make disciples. Listen to this now. You cannot make something that you are not. You can only make disciples if you yourself are a disciple. That's why Jesus Christ, when he called his disciples, he says, come. I will make you fisher of men. And for three years, he made them fishers of men. And now is their time to go and make other fisher of men. You see what we are talking about, church? This is the real church growth. Church growth is not about having a good pastor. It's not about having tea and coffee after church. It's not about those things. It's not about nice pews and, and nice things in the church. Church growth is all about people who come to church who are disciples and after here you go out for the rest of the week, you make other people disciples. That's church growth. But if you're going to look at the pastor and say, ah, he's going to make the church to grow, you are at the wrong state because of that's not church. If you come here every Sunday, you just want to hear a message and feel nice and feel good, you are at the wrong place. Please, Listen. You need to make disciples. So you need to walk a path where we teach you, where we grow you. It's like a baby. You know, Christianity starts when you are born again. That's when Christianity starts. That means you are a baby. Then we feed you milk. We feed you milk. We make you grow. Then you crawl. You fall a bit. You stand. Then you grow up now. You become a child. You go. You see, we grow you. We nurture you. Until now you are fully grown. And now you can also do what others are doing in the kingdom. It's not about spending time just for, to see each other and all those things. So that's why next week we are introducing for the first time, eh? historic, we are introducing you, new English members. Yeah. Eh? Ah, they are not excited, the English people. <laughs> eh? You, 
We are calling you to say, come. We want to train you to be a disciple so that you can make other disciples. You see, in a few years, you must, you must be ready to equip others as well. We're looking forward that in three years, one of you will stand here as well and share the word for us. Otherwise, if it's not going to happen, we're going to preach Hebrews 5, 12, and 14 to you. Listen to what it says. You ought to be teachers by now. You're supposed to be eating meat, but you still need milk. So in three years, you know, that's pressure. I'm giving you pressure now. Hello? I'm giving you pressure now. You have three years to grow. You have 90 days to grow. Because after three years, we're going to tell you, hey, you have been drinking milk. Now it's time to eat meal, meat. It's time to eat steak now. You understand what we are saying? So you don't have, we don't have time. That's why our background is a sunset, because we don't have time. So please, if you desire to follow Jesus, follow him with all your heart, mind, and soul. Or if you want to go follow the world, go follow the world. Make a choice. You cannot have both. And he says, of all nations, where do we start? You know, the words of Wamreni and pastor says, Africa is at our doorstep. Yes. All nations, you know where it starts? In your household. <laughs> then your neighbor. Then your community. Then your country. Then the world. Let's prove that. Let's prove that. That's the second scripture. That's the second scripture. Aha. Come on. I love how we did it together. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. One, two, one, two. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the utter ends of the world. Woo! Aren't you excited for that? That you are called not for Krukasdorp only. You are called to the utter ends of the world, earth. You are called for the whole earth, people. You, what God has placed on your life can touch the whole earth. <laughs> I love what she says. She says Jerusalem. She's thinking of that song, Jerusalem. She's thinking of that song. It's not Jerusalem, it's Jerusalem. <laughs> Uh, but think of this church. He says, but you, who's you? Who's you? You, ne? Yes, you will receive power. Amen. When? Eh? When? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the, the easiest way to prove if the Holy Spirit is upon you is when you are a witness of Christ. It's when you are bold and strong to speak about Christ. If that's not happening, you must ask yourself questions. Because of this scripture is direct. It says, when. <laughs> so if it doesn't happen, that means you are not a disciple yet. We need to help you. And it says, then what will happen after the Holy Spirit come upon you? You will be what? A witness of Christ. You understand? You know what the witness means? The translation of the word is a martyr, someone who dies for Christ. Are you ready to die for Christ? Are you ready to surrender everything you love for Christ? You understand what we are saying? We are almost there. We are almost there. Let's, let's make it to our vision. This, you will go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the other ends of the world. Let's, let's bring it close to us. Because that's how you must read the Bible. You must bring the Bible close to you. So that it can be relevant to you. We're starting in Jerusalem. For us, we're starting in Krukastorp, in Mohale City, in Gauteng, in South Africa. And then we touch the world. Did you hear that? So we're going to be witnesses where? Krukastorp, Mohale City, Gauteng, South Africa, and the world. Ah, I don't see people who are excited here to change the world. <laughs> eh? But we have started already, church. So that's why we say, come and join us. We have started already. Every week, we are busy in the schools. We are busy in the municipality. We are busy on the streets. We are busy in the businesses. Everywhere we are busy. We already started. So we need help. The harvest is plentiful. It just needs workers. Amen. That's what we need. 
Mukhala City. Let me, tell, let, let me show you a, a statistics about Mukhala City so that you can understand the calling upon the church. It says, 35.5 people in Mukhala City, 35.5% people in Mukhala City finish metric ne? of the whole population of Mukhala City. Only 7.2 obtain a national diploma. Only 5.3 obtain a bachelor's degree. And only a devastating 2.8 have a postgrad degree. So, you know, if you do mathematics, it's like there's 20% of young people who lack knowledge. You see the calling of them upon the church? What does the Bible say about lack of knowledge? My people will perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. And whose responsibility is it? The church. Because of Jesus Christ said in Matthew 28, teach them. You understand what we are saying, church? So our responsibility is far bigger than a Sunday service. If we go to Gauteng, you know Gauteng is the smallest province in South Africa. Do you know that? Smallest province in South Africa. But yet, it's the one that there's most people in the whole South Africa. 16 million people. So church, if we are about to witness, it, to be witnesses of Christ, we have an opportunity to witness to 16 million people in Gauteng. Are we ready for that? <laughs> we have 16 million people to witness to in Gauteng. How are we going to do it? You must ask yourself those kind of questions, church. If we only seek Jesus by starting from the Great Commission, he will help us to reach 16 million people. I mean, if the devil can hijack buildings in our project, in our province, think about that. Do you hear that? If the devil can hijack buildings in our province, can Jesus bless us with buildings to host homeless people, to train people who are poor? You understand what I'm saying, church? The devil comes in our province, in Johannesburg, he steals buildings, and we sit and fold our hands. You understand what we are saying? You mean Jesus Christ cannot give us buildings that we can train men and women to go and be disciples of all nations? Do you think Jesus cannot do that? He rose from the dead. What is a building to him? Come on, church. We need to host homeless people, fatherless people, help the poor and the widows, Isaiah 117. And if we speak about seven, uh, South Africa, we have an opportunity of sharing the gospel with, no, with how many people? 60 million people. Just South Africa. And it can be more. <laughs> because if that's what they only counted. What about those of whom they didn't count? So there's 60 million people we can share the gospel with. And to the utter ends of the world, I was telling pastor that this week, a pastor from Kenya just sent a message on our Facebook page and said he wants that we pray for him and he invites us to come and help him with his church. Think about such things, church, that we have a calling for the whole world. You see, church, the Great Commission can change the world greatly. And if we would obey, if we would not obey the Great Commission, it means we would not obey any commandment of Jesus Christ. If we can't obey the Great Commission, there's no other commandment we'll obey of Jesus Christ. Because the Great Commission is the great solution. In conclusion, we are closing. With this guy in the Bible we read this week in Colossians. We read this week in Colossians. We're closing off now. His name is Epaphras. <laughs> Have you ever heard about that guy's name in the Bible? Anyone who has heard about him? Epaphras. He's, no, he's not popular. But yet the Bible says he was a faithful minister of Christ. You see, most of us don't know about him. We know about David. We know about Samuel, Solomon. We know about those people. But this guy was not popular. But listen to what he did. When Paul was preaching in Ephesus about Christ, this guy received the gospel. You know what he did about the gospel? He didn't do nothing. You know what he did? He went back to Colossae, where he's coming from, 
and go and share Christ that at the end a church was started in Colossae. He started teaching the people. He started mobilizing the people, bringing people together for the gospel. Can you do that as well? Bring people together for prayer. Bring people together for Bible study. You know, this guy reminded me of the woman of the, at the well. That woman, we never know her name. Does anyone know her name? She doesn't have a name. <laughs> She's a woman at the well. But she went to take the Samaritans in the city and led them to Christ because of what Christ did to her. So you see, church, Paul says about Ephesus that he was in prayers and was teaching the people. So you cannot teach anyone if you cannot pray for them. We must start praying for the people. We must start praying for them before we can even speak to them. Maybe the reason why we are not witnessing to people is because of we are not really praying for them. We are easy to complain about crime and corruption and all the bad things, but we are less quick to pray about those things. We are easy to complain about presidents, but we are less praying for the president. But if we start praying for real, God will really send us to witness to those people. He will give us the wisdom to go and share the gospel to those people. So I challenge you today to seek Jesus by starting from the Great Commission. Ask him, how can you, your life be a fulfillment of the Great Commission? So that when you are dead, listen to this, so that when you are dead one day, the gospel will continue through the work you have done by his grace alone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, touch each and every mother, touch each and every father to go and be witnesses unto the utter ends of the world. I pray, Jesus Christ, that raise up warriors, raise up an army of the gospel, raise up my king, kings and priests that sit here, Lord, Raise up, my king, workers. Raise up faithful men. Raise up, my king, people who fear you, people who love you, people who want to lay down their lives as you did on that cross 2,000 years ago. Lord, I pray in this today that you will work in each one's heart. Reveal to them what you want to do, Lord, with their lives to touch the utter ends of the world. Show them Jesus Christ. We pray this in your name. We give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.